Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'll show you how you can stream your LLM answers back to the client in a fast API endpoint. So just to show you the example at first, we're gonna we're gonna do something like this where we have an endpoint uh, called stream answer, and we're gonna ask this question to the LLM model. Uh, so the question is gonna be, give me a comprehensive travel plan for a trip to Japan. Okay. So we're gonna take a look at how the answer looks like uh, with streaming and then without streaming. So just to show you the example at first, if we call the endpoint, you're gonna see that gradually as the LLM is sending the answer to our backend, we're sending it back to the client. Okay, so instead of waiting for a long time, we can immediately start getting the answer. So compare this to, uh, to a version where we don't have streaming. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna run through the code, but just take a look at the example. Uh, we're also gonna time the response, right? So let's do the exact same thing, but we're setting streaming to false. And let's call the endpoint again. And you're gonna see that we need to wait for a long time. So we wait until the full answer comes from LLM to our backend, and only after that we send it to the client. So it took a couple of seconds, right? So if we take a look at the timing, you're gonna see that it took us almost eight seconds before the user could even see a word on the screen. Okay, so if you take a look at the streaming answer again, it's eight seconds as opposed to the moment I call the endpoint, I get the answer, right? And then if you look at the timing, you're gonna see that it barely takes us a couple of milliseconds to start painting the user screen with characters. Okay, so now that you've seen the example, let's dive into the code to, to show you how it works. Okay, so it's pretty straightforward, actually. Uh, so over here, most of these are like setup code, uh, so I'll just run you through them. Uh, we have the, oh wait, actually, uh, if, if you wanna look at the code, it's also gonna be linked in the description below and as a comment, so feel free to just like clone my rep repository and play around with it. Okay, so with that said, let me walk you through the code here. So at first, we just have some configuration code uh, where we are loading our OpenAI API key and then instantiating our uh, fast API router. So we have one endpoint here, which is just a health check to make sure the endpoint is up and running. And then uh, this is where a bulk of the code is. Okay, so let's go through it line by line. So our endpoint is called stream answer and it takes in a query parameter called query, which is the query that you need an answer to from the LLM. Whenever, so if you look at the example here, I am not passing in any query parameter, so it's defaulting to whatever value I put here. But you can just as easily, uh, you can just as easily uh, ask the model, or uh, you can just as easily passed a question through your, uh, from your client, okay? Okay, so then we're gonna look at the non-streaming version at first. So if we set this to false, what we're doing is um, we are instantiating our model, which is our GPT-40 mini model, and we're setting streaming to false. So this is the first thing you need to know. Every time you need the model to return the answer in a streaming format, you need to set this to true. But for now, we're gonna set it to false, and then we're gonna set it to true. And then there's just some timing code I'm gonna ignore, and then if streaming, so we're not streaming right now, so we're gonna go to this class. Uh, we're essentially invoking the LLM and constructing a fast API response. So this is just a typical response, and it is not a streaming response. When we get the response, we just return it. It's very simple. The, the client gives us the question in a query parameter. We pass it to the model. We wait for the model to give us the answer back, and then we pass it back to the user. And the whole thing in our case took around eight seconds, so a long time until the user can actually start seeing uh, some response on their screen. Now, let's take a look at the streaming version, right? Because that's the more interesting one. So if we take a look at the streaming version, so for the streaming version, we set this Boolean to true. That means when we're instantiating our model, we, uh, we instantiate it with streaming equals true. Now we're in this block over here. 
so there's two things here. The first is the stream from OpenAI, this function, and then the response of the FastAPI uh, client. So let's take a look at this one at first. So we're calling stream from OpenAI and passing it uh, and passing it the model and the query. And what the function does over here is again it instantiates the model. Okay, it instantiates the model a GPT-40 mini. It makes sure that streaming is set to true because this function will only be invoked when we want our model to give us uh, uh, give us the answer in streaming mode. And once we get it, or at least once we instantiate the model, the, the way we call it is slightly different. If you remember over here, we were doing LLM.invoke, but instead of that, we're doing LLM.stream and passing it the query. And then for every chunk in that response, because the moment you tell uh, you tell OpenAI or ChatGPT to send you the send you the response streaming in a streaming fashion, it's going to return to you one chunk at a time, and you're going to yield the content of the chunk. Okay. Now you need to, so this needs to happen for OpenAI to send the response in chunks. But what also needs to happen is as you're getting these chunks from the from the model you also need to be able to in real time send the data back to your client okay and the way you do that is by uh, by returning a streaming response rather than a generic response so streaming response is a type of response that you get from fast api you can see the uh, the import here and it essentially holds the connection with the client and keeps returning the response in chunks. The only requirement for the for using the streaming response, let's take a look at the at the class, is you need to give it uh, where is it? Give me one second. Yes, yeah, so you do need to give it a content stream for it to work. Okay, so this has to happen. Like you cannot just give it a regular data structure, you need to give it some kind of a generator uh, so that it can keep pushing data back to the client. And that's what you see here. So if we take a look at this function, let's see what does it, uh, what does it return? It yields the response. So it's almost like a generator where it's gonna keep yielding the response uh, to the fast API server as the LLM is returning the data. Okay, so that's pretty much all that needs to happen. So the two big differences uh, between streaming and non-streaming is you wanna instantiate the LLM model with uh, streaming equals true. And then instead of returning the response uh, with LLM.invoke, you want to return it with LLM.stream. And instead of returning the whole response, you wanna yield the chunks. And every time you have a system like this where you're, uh, you're uh, your model is yielding or sending you chunks one chunk at a time. You wrap it in fast API's streaming response to make sure that we don't block until we get the full response. Instead, as L the LLM is sending fast API answers in chunks, we forward the chunks back to the client. And we only close the connection when uh, the LLM stops sending any other chunk. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. We're gonna run through one other example and then I'm gonna end the end the video. So initially our question was give me a comprehensive travel plan. So let's move from that to um, let's say give me give me detailed nutritional information about a pizza. Okay. So we're gonna do the same. Uh, let's set our streaming to true at first. And then let's run the model or uh, call our API. And you're going to see we're getting one or a couple of paragraphs at a time. Okay. Now let's compare this to setting stream equals false. All right. Now we're going to see that we need to wait until the response is ready. So we're gonna give it a few seconds. Yeah, we'll keep waiting. So at this stage, I don't even know it's working, right? That's the problem with 
uh, blocking on the response. So we got a very similar response, but let's see how long we had to wait. Yeah, we had to wait about 14 or close to 15 seconds to see anything at all, as opposed to, again, as opposed to immediately seeing information. Uh, okay, so hopefully that was helpful. In the next video, I'm gonna I'm gonna connect this to a React client so that you can actually see the difference between streaming and non-streaming from a UI, okay? So look forward to that. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I will see you folks in the next one. Take care, bye-bye.